Morfternoon folks, Mark here, and welcome to the sofa. And a big welcome back to this lump of grey. When I showed this off last time, I got this response from a friend. Thanks for that, Chief. Time to see if colour will make it better or worse. So, why not join me at the painting table, and let's get started. We will paint this time, I promise. I started by blocking in colours, because, as usual, I didn't really have a plan. Nice red wall, since the statue already kind of committed it to being a forge world. Then, some rust base colours for the pipes. Those are going to need a top colour, otherwise everything will be red-brown, and this whole thing will be kind of pointless. The statue has rebar, so it had to be concrete, which meant starting with grey, I guess. Let's just throw some brown on the ground while we're at it. And I made the interior walls a lovely institutional sickly green. Then I could start refining things. Clean up the wall colours a little, add some glow around the light, working it up and down until I'm a bit happier. For the concrete, I threw in a bunch of colours. Just leaving it grey would be boring, so I splodged, stippled, and dry brushed all sorts in there. pipes got the old orange-brown standard stippling as rust to start with. While refining the interior area, I got annoyed with constantly touching the painted areas and struggling to see. I ended up building this very high-tech device to hold the base in place at a convenient angle. Hadn't expected to need that until I was painting the suit, but at least I'd glued nuts into the base ready. If I'd left the parts separate, I could have done some fancy airbrush overpainting on the pipes. Instead, I went classic mode and used a stippling brush to paint on streaks of remaining paint. Using the same colours as the concrete pillar, I worked on the statue next. Only difference was, I pushed the texture and highlights a little more, just to give it some interest and draw focus. I also forgot that the rubble would be concrete too. Turns out the poster was hard to get to, now it's assembled. But I managed to make a pretty ropey Beware Xenos poster with a really wobbly alien head. I guess it'll do? Dirt'll hide most of it. 
Moving swiftly on, to break up the colours more, I went with actual metals rather than rust on the door. Throwing some red and copper into the iron colours would age it, but keep it distinct. For the statue, I went with gold trim. Seemed fancier, even if it's probably just painted on the concrete. Mass produced industrial fake fancy. Very 40k, really. The final detail was the control box on the pipes. I faffed about adding little details to the screen and dials while thinking about the casing. Bare metal would look odd next to the rust, but more orange or brown wouldn't stand out. Dark grey felt like the easiest option. That just left the ground, which I wanted to look a bit industrial and sickly. So, greenish, red, dead flesh, and various off-whites, washed and dry brushed until it looked right to me. After quickly picking out the pipe rivets, I started dirtying up the scene. Scorch marks mostly. And a lot of blood inside the building. Stuff really happened in there. Weathering powders added more variation and blended things together some more. little trail of bloody footprints. Then I could gloss the screens and get gooping. Honestly, tried to be clever and it did not work well. Texture gel, 3D printer resin, a lot of hassle. I'm tired, it'll have to do. As a last touch, I blacked out the edges to tidy them up, and that's where we'll call it. The base is finished! Hooray! Quick project my... left... knee? How long have we been going now? Bright side. Other than a few scruffy bits, I think it's gone all right. What do you think? Worth it? Does mean it's time to try something stupid on the suit. Hopefully you're looking forward to it as much as I am. In which case, maybe I'll see you next time. <laughs>